Previously on Restored, the crew set out to revive this once forgotten 1935 Ford. Digging in to diagnose the situation, the guys discover water in all the wrong places. Oh, that's straight water. <laughs> oh my gosh! Is there any way we could put a camera on that? Having high hopes of hearing this girl run again, the guys fight a strong fight and then prayer stepped in. We may have to go to Old Faithful, we may have to pray. I don't mind praying real quick, so okay. God will give us favor. But Lord, we just ask that you would lay your hands on this, Father. We've done what we could do tonight, Father. And uh, we just thank you for, for hearing our prayers, Lord, uh, keeping us safe throughout the night, Lord, and just being with us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right, God's in control. If you don't believe that, then uh, you should. Giving God the glory, the team prepares to pick up where they left off in hopes to get this forgotten beauty back on the road. Follow along now for part two of the 1935 Ford Revival, Restored Live. Well guys, we're back here with part two of the Revival on this old 35 Ford truck here. Uh, if you haven't caught the first episode, I have to say it was quite interesting and quite a lengthy episode at that. Uh, probably one of the longest live revival videos we've done so far, uh, weighing in at two hours and 43 minutes. Uh, we just could not get this old motor to run. Uh, in fact, never did get it up to run, up and running until we took the time, prayed, and uh, honestly, the next time she fired right up and ran. So, uh, as you just saw, we had a lot of issues with this old 318 motor that's in this truck. Uh, the oil pan was full of water. Not exactly sure how that happened, when that happened. Uh, the motor was locked up solid. We weren't able to get it to turn over very well. Dad got shot in the face <laughs> with water and transmission fluid solution. Uh, but yeah, that's we just wanted to pick back up of where we left off on that. Originally, we were hoping on that video we'd be able to get it up and running, uh, maybe idling, maybe even move on its own power. So with this video, we're going to kind of pick up where we left off. Uh, hopefully to hear a run, hopefully uh, go ahead and try to get it put in gear, make sure the transmission's shifting, and maybe we can get it outside. Uh, we figured out a way we can hopefully uh, connect the drone up with this, where we can have Dad follow me down there up the road a little ways with the drone, and then maybe my GoPro will just kind of reach as far as it'll reach, hopefully. Uh, but with that being said, I think what I'm going to go ahead and do, I've got a hot battery, once again, <laughs> charged up for this truck. I'm going to hook it up and try to figure out the ignition switch in this so we don't have wires running everywhere. And uh, Dad, you can kind of tell them what you're going to do on that as far as that goes. I'm going to grab the battery and uh, meet them back in the middle of the truck. I'm going to go ahead and try to, uh, I had to cut the belt earlier in the other video so that we could actually turn that blade so we could get hold of the, uh, the nut on the crank so we could turn it over. But I'm going to try to replace that, uh, that belt real quick on it. We had a bad ground wire uh, that you guys helped us figure out on this truck. Uh, the, one of the brake lines kept getting scalding hot. Uh, it kept getting super hot so we didn't have a ground that ran from the motor down to the frame, which was still really confusing me of why the brake line of all things was uh, you know, using itself to ground out. Uh, but I did find there was a ground wire that ran from the head to the firewall. So that's why that thing was, because I was wondering how it was getting from the block to, to the master cylinder so well. But there's a little ground wire that ran from that to the firewall and it was just sending itself on down that brake line there, I guess. So uh, hopefully we've got that problem figured out. I think so. It looks to be solved. We'll know here in just a little bit. This belt is really tight and it's adjusted about as far as it can, but I think I'm rotated enough to get it on there. Find that voltage tester again. You know where that voltage tester is? Uh, I one in a box right there, but I had one that was already... It's over on that other table, I believe. Alrighty. I'm going to try to find a hot wire again in here that I can run down to everything. That'll go down to the starter yeah, solenoid, uh, to our cool and ignition module. 
I just wanted to make sure there was nothing touching in here while I hook that battery up that I can see in the obvious. Got about four different wires here that are loose. So I'll hook that battery up and start checking in here again. Boy, there's just not a whole lot of adjusting on that belt right there. It's pretty tight just going on. Get it on there? Yeah, I got it on. But I want to make sure I got it snug. I don't so I just got a little enough. cheapy voltage tester here that we actually got for a free gift from Harbor Freight. <laughs> but I'm just going to go through here and see if I can find something that's got some juice to it. It's got a little juice. Might have got a bad ground here. Not much power. That's what I had trouble the last uh, the last episode trying to find a wire that had 12 volts to it. There should be a wire that runs straight from the battery up here that's going to give us a constant 12 volts. And I'm not seeming to find one. So I may just have to run a new wire on that. Might be my easiest bet. That one there. Just ain't showing a lot. Check back here again. I reconnected, I'd cut a wire that ran to the alternator, so I reconnected it. Uh, but it just runs straight to the alternator, which is what, you know, recharges the battery once it starts using juice from it. And then juice down to those wires. But... Thought maybe this might be the wire we were looking for, but. So I can do a little pry in there. But, uh... So I'm not really being able to find a, a hot wire inside the truck there. I found one that's got about two volts coming through it, so I don't know if it's just got a bad connection somewhere or what the deal is on that. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and run a, a wire uh, straight from the battery. A little bit better than we ran it last time, probably up underneath the truck and inside here. Uh, that'll give us the, the, the consistent 12 volts that we need all the time. Uh, so I'm going to do that. And then I think I, we, we know which one runs down to the solenoid because we were jumping it over last time. And we know which ones ran to our, our uh, ignition and stuff like that as well. So once I get that, should be able to turn it over with an actual key. Just about got this all done. You want me to try to get the gas lines? Yeah, we still need out. to, I want to go ahead and probably drain that uh, radiator as well. Okay. I got some uh, antifreeze we can put back in it, but uh, either that or, yeah, we need to run a fuel system up to it somehow. Oh, wrong tool.
We didn't think we were going to be able to get a video out this week, but uh, having this thing still in the shop and uh, finding a little extra time, we went ahead and decided to go ahead and try to make a part two to where we could show it actually uh, leaving out of the shop because we kind of need it out of the shop. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't want to just leave it where it was just like, that was it, it cranked, that was it, so. But hopefully we make a little bit of headway a little faster than we did last time. Huh? Yeah, I hope so. That was... Seen some comments where people had suggested maybe, you know, something that happened when we had all this cold weather and something cracked or something like that, but uh, we did recheck the oil and it looks fine right now, which I know we, we've turned it over a little bit, but it hasn't ran very long. So we'll kind of get to check into that more once we can hopefully get it to run a little longer here. I think Dad's going to go ahead and bypass the, uh, the original tank back here and uh, run us a new tank that we know we've got fresh fuel instead of rusty. Yeah, I think I'm just going to bypass just about everything. I'm just going to... Only thing I'm going to use really is just that that old fuel line coming up here and tie it right back in up here, put a new filter in, and just go from that. Maybe, hopefully. One of these days, uh, it'd be idea for somebody to come through here and just uh, get you a good wiring harness to try to rewire this thing. What happened? Oh, it just wouldn't come off. It tried to bust my knuckle, but instead it pinched my pinky. So that sounded like like something worse than that. Oh no. <laughs> Thank all y'all for hanging out with us and all the watchers on the last video. I know it's been a little bit since we had put out any content, so. Next week we're going to be working really hard on the little Volkswagen, uh, trying to get a lot of headway made on it. Hopefully we'll get all the suspension work filmed on it. And uh, maybe start doing some panel replacement. I'm just going to go ahead and take this. There was an old glass filter right here, Lance, that was on it. I'm going to go ahead and just get it completely out of the way so that it's not it's yeah. a straight shot with the other filter. If we, that has just a, a regular fuel pump on the motor, right? Yes, sir. Yep. So I figure we'll use that electric fuel pump back there, but we may want to pump some through right, the line that. first to see what it, clean that line out. See what kind of yummies we got in it? Yeah. I was really hoping I could find a hot wire inside there to bypass having to do this. But, no luck. That almost sounded like it was a tight fit.
This will get us the 12 volts we need uh, constantly at all times. That way it will send it to your solenoid. The switch will allow it to send it to your solenoid. And then the switch will also send it down to the, uh, or to the ignition stuff to allow our spark. All right, yeah, I've got all this up here. You want me to try to get some connections back here? Uh, yeah. Are you... <clears throat> get it to where we get some, what my dad used to call push lean up there. <laughs> Probably just going to disconnect uh, this wire that I thought would be our constant 12 volt. So I'm just trying to run as few wires as possible here. I'm going to keep the wire that runs to our uh, alternator hooked up. Make sure I'm not. I'll go ahead and pull that loose. All right. Thanks for the patience with that, guys. I'm going to go ahead and start uh, hooking up this ignition switch inside here now. Okay, that went that went a lot quicker than I thought it was going to. So, luckily, there was already a connection there that I could just undo and go into. Uh, you want me to go ahead and I don't want to do the fuel thing until you're you're able to kind of run that end of it down there. I'll yeah. go ahead and start draining the... Yeah, you can go ahead and drain that radiator, see what it looks like. I keep misplacing my shop towel, so... Luckily, they're throwaways. Don't know about the brakes on this truck. I do know that it has uh, uh, disc brakes on it. Just don't know if they're functional, but it does have disc brakes all the way around on it. It's got a, a Camaro, uh, Camaro rear end, I think out of a, I'm wanting to say he said an 80, 85 Camaro. And then a Mustang II uh, front end up underneath it. So independent suspension, all that good stuff. Holy smokes, I may be able to drain it, I may not. That's tight. Yeah, I might have to get it then. <laughs> Let's see. Constant 12-volt there. Not knowing a lot about the brakes, uh, I do want a way to be able to kill this truck. So that is why I'm trying to fix up a little bit better way than we had last time, which we had wires <laughs> strung out across everywhere. Any luck? Yeah, I got it. Thought I heard I got it, it flowing, so. I'm kind of having to hold my hand in front of it, though, because it it would flow out right where I can't get the bucket. How's it look? Like water. Don't look it, it may have a little bit of a tint to it, but not. It may have froze somewhere then. Pretty rusty? No, it's, it's clean. Hmm. Sure look rusty in the Yeah, up in the top, top. of the radiator, yeah. Of course the bucket I grabbed was nasty anyway, so it's gonna be hard to tell looking at it. <clears throat> yeah. I didn't figure we were gonna drink it, so I didn't figure the bucket being clean mattered, so <laughs>
Got Christian's little ranchero moved uh, over the weekend. I was trying to get some buses moved around while we had a little bit of dry weather, so I believe you drove by and seen it out by the road and had a little bit of a panic, didn't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she's, it's made it a little bit closer to the shop. I think this one was our mission. I believe the well's just about to run dry. And the last wire should just go to the We were able to get the uh, the carburetor uh, unstuck. Had to spray a little penetrating oil down in the carburetor to get the I guess the bottom flaps to start opening, and they they finally broke loose. So yeah, that was one of those things that just needed time. Yep. Needed to set. And we had sprayed it and tried to work it and work it, and I think. You know, that was a lot of the complications on getting it to, to try to crank, you know. Yeah, it couldn't breathe or anything. The only, and that's you, the reason you why. were only able to move the choke, so. Yeah, and when you have to use the choke for the throttle, that kind of <laughs> kind of makes it hard. How's it coming in there? Uh, just about putting a snug on everything. As long as I've got the wires the way I thought they went, as long as I thought right, which it's hard to say. <laughs> I'm going to leave it hanging loose until I figure out for sure. Right. Uh, I think I've got that. So you've got a belt on it, so there's okay. nothing that's. I'm going to go ahead and hook this battery up and see if it bumps over. Uh, so what we're going to do is we've got a, we've just got a regular, our little old faithful tank that we, we normally gravity feed, uh, but we, we've got a little electric pump back there. So we've got it in the bed, ran to the factory, uh, well, not factory, but the rubber hose that runs <laughs> up here to the engine. So we're going to hook the uh, fuel pump just back there at the battery. So I won't be able to control the fuel pump with my key right now, so we'll just have to, you know, connect it and disconnect it as we kill it and start the truck. Uh, but hopefully right now I've got the battery connected. It should turn over. So we'll see, and then we'll move forward from there. Report, are you clear? I'm clear, ready. Nothing. It's not getting no power through that fire. It's almost got to be, I would think that ground back there more than likely. Let me just take it loose and we'll ground it like we did before and okay. see if that it won't take long. We may have, we tried to run a ground wire, but we we may have ran it in a spot that wasn't getting a good, as good enough ground as what we had before. I'm going to go ahead and start filling up this uh, radiator if Dad got the plug. Yeah, I've got it. I just tightened it. All righty. So. Go grab some antifreeze real quick and start filling that up. Not too rusty there. Yeah, it's pretty rusty there. So 
dad said that this looked like mainly water up in here and not really a lot of any kind of cooling in it so hopefully we don't have any issues where something froze and And everybody's ears up trying to get this situation. Tight it down. Got it moved? Got it moved. Check it real quick. Oh yeah, yep, that's what it was. So we had a bad ground, again. <laughs> <laughs> so now, hopefully I can hook this back up. And you stole, you stole my shine, Dad. It was supposed to work, but. Oh yeah, yeah, took the thunder right from you. Well, you. Got to have that ground to get that lightning and that thunder, so. <laughs> just goes to show, though, how many, you know, uh, problems we've, we've had with this truck on, on just something as simple as a ground that sometimes these vehicles are parked um, for something like that, you know? Yeah. Alright, so now that we've got that hooked back up. Should should turn over. There we go. Not ignition switch for a brand new ignition switch, it kinda hung there for a oh, second, yeah. scared me. So yeah, we've got it turning over. Uh, should be good. All right, well other than having a bad ground uh, back there, that we had, what we did is last time, last video, we just had the ground wire uh, vice grip to the frame where we cleaned off a little bit. And so I think while, while we were down in between this and that, getting ready, Dad went ahead and ran the ground wire where the original ground wire was, yep. which probably wasn't a great spot anyway. Right. So we're, <clears throat> we're just gonna end up probably re-drilling the hole in that area that's just directly to the frame. This other spot was kind of more so to, uh, to a rusty bracket. Yeah, a rusty here. bracket there. So, anyways, all right. So now that we got it turning over, uh, I started filling that. Where is that coming from? That wet spot. Yeah. It was already there. It was. Uh, yeah. I was about to say we may be. Yeah. No, it was uh, dripping out somewhere. I know I spilt some over, but. No, I seen it a while ago. Whenever I. Oh, uh, well, I don't know. No, because there's quite a bit. That on the side right there was was there before I started draining it because I seen it. Let me, as I'm turning it over, see if it's coming out anywhere. Which the crazy thing is, it's if it has any fuel, it might accidentally crank. You ready? Yep. No, nah, we're nothing. No, nothing. Well, we'll definitely want to look at that. I just stepped in it and I was like, ah. Oh. I said, I seen it whenever I was coming over there to drain it. but Let's go ahead and try to, uh, I'll still need to put some more water in that with that, uh, some of that antifreeze I put in there. Let's we go, wanna... let's just try to see if it'll, it'll crank up again real quick. Uh, make sure that I've got all that stuff wired in right. Okay, uh, let me. You wanna keep it running for just a little bit? Yeah, we'll go ahead and try to keep it running just a hair. Now that we our ignition, I mean our <laughs> our carburetor's working. Just say, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a good. We can rev it a little bit. Give it a drink of the good stuff.
Okay. Ow. That was quick. Yep. Ah. Okay. That was enough to tell me that uh, the ignition's wired in right, so. Front GoPro, uh, it went off whenever it cranked up. I think it just kind of. We're going to have to get a new cord for that thing. Mm -hmm. I think it just kind of vibrated. vibrated a little bit. Yeah, that's not the best. So Christian, if you want to go ahead and pop up that ad real quick, uh, mm -hmm. we'll get this GoPro working. We're going to be kind of spending some time in this area anyways, uh, and we need to be working for you guys to see. So uh, we'll go ahead, go ahead and throw up this video, and we'll be right back with you. The Ford Motor Company is proud to present the new Ford V8 for 1935. Down through the years, the Ford has blazed a trail of progress. The car has always been the symbol of reliability, economical service, and honest manufacture. Back in 1908, the Model T Ford was the sensation of its time. Fifteen million of these cars were made. Then came the Model A Ford. Like the Model T, it still retained the title of the universal car. And then, in 1932, the introduction of the Ford V8. The first time an eight-cylinder car had ever been offered at a low price. And now we bring you the biggest, finest Ford car ever built. The new Ford V8 for 1935. It combines all the resources, the engineering genius, the faith and the courage of the Ford Motor Company. Here is everything that anyone could want in an automobile. Beauty, safety, power, speed, dependability, economy, and comfort beyond your greatest expectations. All right, Johnny, you first, then Priscilla, then Tubby, and then you, Paul, you join in. The 35 Ford has a new sort of thing For making it ride like a bird on the wing On good roads are bumpy, no sideway or swing And they call it the new sensor poise You call it what? The center poise, that's a new Ford idea Gives the car perfect balance, center poise, center poise Poise, robot, poise <laughs> Are you ready, Priscilla? You tell us about that new soft clutch. So we got a GoPro that has a bad cord, and we fought that last time. So uh, we tried to make this work off of a gas, gas station charger cord, <laughs> and it just ain't working out for us real well. So sorry about that. Where we're going to pick up now, we, you heard it fire off just a little bit, uh, a lot quicker than it did last time. Uh, doesn't sound the greatest, but where we're going to go ahead, you have the gas tank hooked up back there. It's hooked up back there, but not I'll kind of show them in case they weren't able to see what we're doing. So this was the original, or the gas tank they were using back here. Not really sure about what kind of fuel would have been in it, the condition of it. So we've just got this tank ran here, a little uh, inline electric fuel pump here. And uh, I guess there was a filter already on the truck that we're just pumping through this filter up there to the engine but I think we want to try to uh, clean out this line first so we'll probably have dad hook it up and I can show you guys what the fuel looks like if we can find something to catch it in this ought to be good enough just to catch a little if you want to go ahead and hook that pump up, that way I can show them with this. They might be able to see with, I don't know which camera would be the best. But. You ready? Yep. Okay, here we go. All right. Okay, it's not terrible. Uh, trying to show you guys, so yeah, it's not too bad. So it is a little dark, but you know it started coming up a little bit clearer now. So I think uh, I think we're well enough just to go ahead and hook it up. And we've got two filters ran here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put a little bit more gas in that jug. I seen it was a little low. Mm. This filter may not want to go on this hose. 
filter too big? Yeah, it's pretty big on filter. It's going, it just ain't wanting to. There we go. It's nice to hear it fire up though. A little easier. Yeah, that was. We don't know the condition of the inside of this carburetor. Uh, we may end up having to pull it loose and clean out the bowl and stuff on it. Radiator cap down. Uh, yeah, it's here. right up on the counter. I noticed it was splashing some stuff. We may, we may end up losing this GoPro again. Try to crank it here. If we do, we may just have to go with it. That's fine for right now. Okay. We're just going to try to see. I'm going to go ahead and let it pump up the fuel up to the carburetor here. See it filling it up, the filter? Yeah, got the filter. Is it dripping? Yeah, it's dripping like crazy. Wow, it's dripping as tight there's, as that was. There's, there's. I don't know if that hose has got a split in it or that's. It may have. Or that filter might even. I mean, as tight as that thing went up on there, it right. shouldn't be leaking like that. No, it's it's the filter. Got a hole in it. Yep. Got a split in it there. Uh, You're just going to have to run it straight up there. Yep. Oh, well, I've got a filter back there, so. Yeah. Once we get it, uh, I don't know if it pumped up enough to even start getting here at the carburetor yet. We didn't run it long till it started leaking out of that filter. Uh, it'll fill up this carburetor, and we should hear it squirting around in there. Hopefully our hose is going to be long enough. It should be. It looks like it is. I'm going to check this master cylinder real quick. See if we got any brake fluid or what it looks like. Yeah. Actually got quite a bit in there. Doesn't look too bad either. So that's a good sign. It ain't dry. No more water, so yeah, I guess that just come from Something. Ice melting. <laughs> got it? I got it. I think it's good. See if it's leaking now. Yep, yeah, it's still leaking. Is it the hose? Hose got slid in it? It may have. That hose clamp ain't the best thing. I may have to steal one off of that other right there. And that is so big that it just, it's just kind of. Oh, I heard it. It was getting up there because I heard it drain back down. Yeah, I'm going to cut, cut some of that off and use a different hose clamp because that one's, that one's really nasty. Need a razor blade or you got one? There's one right here. Oops. 
I'm going to go ahead and start putting this ignition switch in so it's not hanging down. While you're doing that, I think it's the way it needs to be. We have so many of these little cheap O'Reilly ignition switches, all the keys look the same. <laughs> So what do you guys think? You think we'll actually get to see her hit the road or? I think we'll at least get to see her idle. I think it'll. It's been fighting too long not to, not to go ahead and do us right. Okay, I think we got her now. We'll hang on to that just to make sure it does. We're good, I see. Leaking somewhere else. Oh, it's flooding. Sure yep. it is. So yeah, the float stuck in it for sure. It's probably going to end up having to pull this carburetor apart. We try to tap around on it and then see if it'll stop. Still. No, we're not flooding now. Maybe not? Nope. I'm going to try to turn it over then. Okay. See, does the gas pedal work? Yeah, Semi. Kinda. Try it. Clear? Clear. You can give it a little squirt. If you happen to see it flooding, let me know. Okay. vacuum leak right back there so it flooded it that's why yeah. it was so hard to crank lost our GoPro again mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we might just start using this one for right now I can do that I'll get one of these little I'm gonna try to stop up some of this gas here in case it happens to try to backfire or something yeah, not running the greatest. Most of it doesn't disappear. But there's a lot more up there than that. What are you doing? It's got a little vacuum leak. I noticed that a while ago whenever I was uh, putting stuff on and I noticed that one there looked like it was missing a little cap thing. You know, there we Can't go. Be much in one though. No, it wasn't a whole lot, but well, they've got vacuum. They've got little hoses with bolts put <laughs> in them all over the place, guys. It's crazy. All right, I'm going to try to crank it again real quick. Okay. Uh,
Will what? you tap on that? I feel like it, we're still having problems with okay. it not really Plus, getting it. You want it plugged in? The... Oh, yeah. I guess that would help, wouldn't it? making it just kind of all of a sudden just cut off. Let's check Probably the oil. It's flooding a little bit there now. Carburetor's flooding? Yep. Um, Down here at the bottom. Yep, so that float's still sticking every once in a while. That's probably why it's running okay, not running mm -hmm. so good. I'm probably going to end up having to tear that apart. You want to check the oil, though, and see, make sure we don't, it don't look milky like water's down in it. Get a little smoky, ain't it? <laughs> that smoky won't won't kill us, I don't guess. Try to get this thing going right here. Well, what do you think? It does. It looks like it's got a little water. It's hard to it. say if it was some that was the level's right. not changed. The level's really, not has changed. It? Uh -uh. So it's hard to tell yet. Uh, trying to get this thing working again for us. That's not a big deal. Oh well. Uh, oil does look a little bit more. This GoPro's a little behind. It, it's a little. It is a little milky it's a little now. Milky. Hmm. But. Check it one more time. See, it doesn't. I mean, it's close to where it was. Still got something in it that we're going to need to address. That yeah. Changing the oil again or something. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's holding the same level, but. I'm going to try to let it run a little longer and see what we. Don't forget your. Well, have to see if it's flooding. No. Don't show to be now.
I know, but I can't get in there at certain spots for this. Probably coming out. No? I might no. just be starving on it now. I might try spraying some of that down through there while I'm help clean out something. So what we've got is we've uh, ran out of fuel back there, but our carburetor is still acting up, the float's sticking on it. Uh, we're going to go grab some more gas, top off that tank. It's getting very smoky in here, uh, so I think we're going to need to open up that door as well. I'm going to fight with this GoPro, uh, but we're going to let Christian go ahead and tell you about our merch real quick while we get all that stuff set up, and we'll meet you back here with some fresh gas and probably start digging into this carburetor. So we have uh, our original restored tees that are the um, rainbow flag. They're probably one of my favorites because they're very, very bright, just really, really neat shirts. But we also have some old Betsy shirts that'll be coming in. And that's over the uh, past station wagon we did not too long ago, the uh, Mercury Cur Commuter. So um, we have those ones coming in. And then we also have some shirts of my Uncle Frankie coming in that uh, was over the abandoned cars where we went out, dug them up. It's really neat. but. Uh, yeah, so we you can get your merch at uh, www.be-restored.com. So, yeah. Need a funnel? I probably need a funnel. So, yeah, thanks for everybody that has bought merch uh, over the past uh, few days, honestly. Uh, we've sold a ton of merch, and hopefully we're going to be having those uh, old Betsy shirts. They'll be here. Uh, before too long, and then the Uncle Frankie shirts, uh, we're really excited about getting those on hand as well. And we plan on doing, a, a lot of people have asked about that old 53 uh, Chevy Bel Air. We do plan on doing a will it run on that video, or on that car as well. Uh, it won't be anything live, it's something that we want to put together on a produced, edited style video. Uh, so we'll get it inside the shop, you know, have kind of a camera set up just like this right here, but it won't be live on it. Something that we can, you know, hang on to for a while. and. I uh, always cherish with that car. So, but yeah, thanks, guys. You getting it? Yeah, getting it a little bit. Hopefully, that was our issues on the ending of that thing not running super good. Right. Sucked it down pretty quick. It did suck it down quick. I think we got our GoPro working as long as it'll switch out the, the cord on it, so maybe that'll keep us working a little longer. Try it out. Just gonna try to keep it running as long as we can, guys, until it warms up and hopefully idles, so hang with us. If it won't idle, we're gonna end up having to pull that carburetor apart. trying to sneak around there. I may have you kind of... Yeah. 
Trying to play with that. Boy, when it dies, it dies. No vacuum leaks that you see or hear? Nothing here. that I can hear, really. Real quick, down. Yeah. Choke again. Yeah, that thing may have got bent out of shape of hair. I'm gonna look at that real quick. Turn this key off. I was having to flex on that thing pretty hard the other day trying to get it to, to move and it may have, uh, it would have took a lot to bend that. If our chelp was working right, I don't think it's working right. I don't think so either. Take that back off. We may have to end up wiring that thing where it'll stay in spot, you know? Right. We've had the worst trouble with carburetors here lately. Normally that's not our issue. It's crazy though, is that's still not even hitting that thing. See, still won't even hit it. Go ahead and do that again. Weird. It had a heavier spring on it. That spring's not quite right. Not stout pulling enough. it back good. Go ahead and try to crank it again. Oh. <laughs> on a few. That might help. Yeah, that needs to be wired in. <laughs> it's 
Should pump it on up there though. I'm honestly surprised. over to here and just kind of so I think she's running a lot better than it was uh, earlier today when we started <laughs> on it so it's still not wanting to idle for some reason we're having trouble with this choke if you don't have the choke uh, closed down on it it's not wanting to run at all but it doesn't seem like the choke linkage is actually working the way it needs to be so what we're going to try to do is just for for now just kind of temporarily uh, wire this ch choke in a position it would work kind of like you would have a manual choke, except we won't be able to open it back up inside with the cable and stuff. We're just going to have it sitting in a certain position for right now, uh, just to let it run a little longer, a little smoother without having to hold it there. Um, then I guess we'll go ahead and try to get it off these things and see if we can put it in gear and see if the transmission does anything. Okay. I think that'll work for now. It just ain't got enough. enough idle left in it. Yeah, there's not enough screw there to. And there might be a little bit more that I can get out of it. I need a shorter. It's a flat blade. It's flat blade, okay. Yeah, if we had a stronger spring, which I don't know that we do, uh, that's a lot of it for sure. Even. Oh, that spring is very, very, <laughs> not really doing much of anything. Try to move it a little further out down here. That may help some. Alrighty. Well, you want to try to get it off the... Yeah, we can. Get it on the ground and see if it'll... Well, I guess I need to try to see the brakes. Well, be a good time to check it, wouldn't it? Yep. Got a good pedal. We got something. Stopping? I guess. Go ahead and roll it a good roll. Yep. Yeah. So, at least got one brake. <laughs> Hopefully we at least have front brakes. That's one brake more than we normally have. Let's go ahead and get it off these. Try to see what she does. Probably gonna need a lot of transmission fluid, I'm sure. As long as it's been sitting. <sighs> old motor don't sound too bad. No. Looks like just got some old glass packs up underneath there. Going down, everything out of the way. Uh, yeah. Cords and all that. Ooh. That thing's so low. I think Dad did get a tube put in yeah. this, so... There's no way that tire was going to hold any air. No. Without it. Uh, hole, in the, hole in the rim, right along where the bead goes. Now 
How are we looking? Look pretty good. We're not. I think it's just water that was down in the. Probably just a little bit that was still left yeah. in there that's mixed. Uh, yeah, I think we'll we're fine. Get it changed later on once it's kind of showed itself some more. All right. So, trying to find something I could put in front of it just in case. Uh, da, 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 da. Well, I'll just kill it. I'll just be ready to kill it. There's a square block if you want me to grab it. Get this old damn buzzard off the roof of it. You want it in front, behind? Uh, I don't care. I'll try. I'll try. Well, I'll hit reverse hit first. Reverse, yeah, yep. so. This thing was made for a tall man, though. <laughs> Plenty of room in here. <clears throat> here we go. Uh, you want to guess? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, hook man. Up. That's why you need to wire it into your ignition. Yep. There you go. Forward and reverse. Yeah, it's kind of a kind of a challenge in there to be ready to kill it and kill shift it, it yeah. and keep it running. And I wish that choke. It's it's going to be hard to ever get that thing where it needs to be though with the the constant right. temperature change of the motor. It just opened up a pretty good bit though there. Well, do we want to try to? Try to get Creep it, out it outside, out. or do we want to? I don't know that we're going to get it going much better until we really start putting a lot more time into that Carb carburetor there. I think I can baby it enough to try to get it outside and uh, hate to tear apart that thing and end up making this another three hour long right. live. Yeah, we can, we may even have to wind up getting another carburetor. Just, yeah. Or we can go, I mean, we can take what we got right now and. So guys, I think what we're going to go ahead and do is uh, we're going to try to get it outside. It's, it's not running the greatest because of this choke right here. Once the choke's in the position that it needs to be, I wish it had a manual choke where I could control it inside there. I don't have anything. If we had a cable like that, I could run one just kind of temporarily real quick. But uh, don't have another carburetor or anything like that. But just happy to hear it actually running. I'm pretty sure that we can just kind of baby it outside. I think it seems like the brakes are working enough that uh, it didn't take off whenever I put it in gear. Uh, so we're going to switch some cameras around. Uh, try to go ahead and get it outside. I think Dad's going to throw the drone up as well. I'm going to put a GoPro somewhere on this uh, where we can make it work. Uh, hopefully it'll reach as, as far as we can get with it. 
and uh, we'll see if I'm walking back or driving <laughs> back. So hang tight, and we'll be right back with you. We want you to meet Fireman Bill Brennan, who can put the car through its paces without breaking any traffic laws. Bill knows a lot about automobiles. He likes to test out their speed and power. And in this case, it's lucky for Bill on the slippery road that he has those new Ford brakes. Whoops, says Bill. That was a close shave. Now I think I'll open it up and get a line on speed. Oh, the traffic hop. Where do you think you're going, to a fire? Bill answered yes, and the cop had to believe him. That's the beauty of being a fireman. Here's the comfortable back seat, and the front seats are four to five and one half inches wider. Every modern convenience is provided for the driver, and in summer, you will be glad the windshield's open. All of the new Ford V8 cars for 1935 have all steel bodies. You'll like the new easy gear shift, too. These cars are equipped with safety glass throughout at no extra cost. The body lines are distinctly new and modern without being extreme. There is a choice of rich body colors, including a striking new gunmetal finish on deluxe cars. The upholstery and appointments reflect a new standard of luxury in a low-priced car. A wide range of choice is offered in the 12 body types, and prices are surprisingly low. No car costs so little to own and run as the Ford V8. New modern cars for the new year, symbols of progress, leaders in value, pace setters on every road, on every hill, and at every traffic light. The new Ford V8 for 1935. <laughs> All right, guys, so we've got some cameras moved here. Uh, we got Christian with the wireless GoPro. She's going to try to chase me outside the best we can. Uh, Dad's about to run out there real quick, try to throw up the drone. I'm going to try to limp this thing outside. Hopefully, we can make it down there to the other shop. He's going to try to fly down there best we can. Uh, so let's just see what happens here. <laughs> You can probably switch it to your GoPro. Oh, this will be interesting. <laughs> Get your drone up, Dad. Okay. Come on. Come on. Try to follow me the best you can, then you can come back in here and try to switch angles. Okay. Ah. At least the brakes are actually working. A lot of junk around here.
he's gonna idle. Well, guys, I made it down to the other side here, so she's not running the greatest, but going from locked up uh, to actually moving down the road in just a few days, that's not too bad, I don't guess. Uh, just kind of show you around. I got a lot of smoke or anything like that up front here. She's a pretty cool old truck. Oh, I forgot to disconnect the fuel pump. That needs to be wired in. But probably take about a couple weeks worth of just... Uh, Working on her, get some wiring done on it. Need to change that oil out because I think it still had a little bit of water residue down, still down in the pan. Uh, but other than that, I think she's doing pretty good. So I'm going to try to, uh, I'm going to try to get a hold of Christian, I guess, to let her know to shut down this live stream if she hasn't already. So uh, I forgot my phone. <laughs> So I guess Bub's walking back and that's my cue to end the live video. So bye guys. <laughs> <laughs>